Okay, well here we are in another ArcGIS 10.2 Let's Play, trying to figure this thing out, see where the differences are, where the new tools are, and uh, and those sorts of things. So here we are, we're inside of ArcMap, and indeed we're in uh, ArcMap 10.2 for desktop. So what I've done here is uh, we're going to give a little test. Supposedly the new version of uh, ArcGIS 10.2 can address 64-bit memory space, uh, meaning that uh, ArcGIS 10.2 can geoprocess across much larger amounts of RAM that me you may have on your system, plus it can also address all of the um, cores that you have on your uh, CPU. This uh, CPU has uh, eight cores on it. Uh, right now we're looking at some baseline stuff. Looks like every other core for whatever reason is doing a little bit of baseline work for me 16 17 uh, percent of course I got this uh, um, video recording software fraps running in the background and that probably is uh, is the you know 16 17 18 percent that we're seeing so that's our baseline now what I've got is I have a rather large data set it's the wetlands of Idaho from the National Wetlands Inventory I clipped it strictly to the boundary of uh, of Idaho there was some things around the uh, flowing out from the Columbia River so I um, uh, I just clipped it exactly to the boundary of Idaho it's a pretty big data set it draws uh, fairly slowly even on this uh, large uh, workstation opening up this attribute table for it here and uh, as you can see, we have 171, almost 172,000 records, meaning we have 172, roughly 172,000 polygons. I'm now going to uh, open up a second data set that's uh, probably equally as complex. Uh, it doesn't cover the entire state, but it is uh, a portion of the state of Idaho. Uh, showing the soils, uh, NRCS soils from the Sergo uh, data set. As you can see, this is a, a big data set as well, drawing very slowly here. And I'm going to take a look at the, uh, the number of polygons, the number of records in this, and I'm going to do a little shortcut here. I'm pressing and holding the control button and double clicking. Uh, and that lets me bring up the table automatically. And this has been a tool that's been available for a couple of versions a couple of versions ago. Uh, it's actually still drawing so it's giving me fits here to launch this uh, launch this table. Uh, my CPU is is pretty busy. Let's take a look at what's going on. Yeah I've got her up another you know I've just about doubled my use on this thing here 38 almost 40 percent. There we go so we have 63,000 records 63,000 polygons to deal with. Well let's put let's put arc to the uh, to a little bit of work here. As I'm going to turn on both layers now. Let these things draw. You'll see that they overlay uh, properly. They um, they are in uh, UTM Zone 12 North WGS 84 uh, and uh, Idaho Transverse Mercator NAD 83. Uh, both of them projected on the fly together into this system here. That was the first layer that I added so it defined the projection uh, and geographic reference system for this data frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, a, a union. I'm going to put together everything that, that both soils and the uh, wetland uh, inventory have in common. Now I don't know what question I potentially would be answering with this but hey these are two complicated data sets and I want to see if I can uh, really put all eight of my processors to work. So uh, I like to use the search tool. If I know the name of a tool that I'm interested in, uh, I just go to the search tool. I type in the name or a name I think it might be called, and there we have it. Uh, this is the tool that I want to utilize here, uh, the analysis tool called Union. And uh, let's see, I got this thing dropped down here on me. There we go. Bring it back up so you can see it. Uh, my input features, I have two input features. Sure, I'm going to use soils, soils, and I'm going to use 
the wetlands inventory. My output feature class is going to go over here to my default geo database, soils union. Um, I'm not going to set anything else in here. Yes, there will be some gaps allowed, and that's fine because I do have some gaps. Here you can see Caribou County, Idaho doesn't even have a soils um, survey done for it. So I'll leave that in there. Uh, and now I'm going to click OK, get to work. Uh, and another thing I like to do when I'm doing geoprocessing, I like to watch what it's doing. So I go to my results uh, tabbed window. You see there's the union that I just started. Um, and there's my messages. It's executing this union. There's my start time. And it's currently reading features. Let's see what this thing is up to. Yeah, it certainly looks like I'm running all eight of my processor cores. Uh, still not really not really pushing it much. I'm at 38, 40 percent. We'll let it go here for a little while. I'm using, uh, you know, about six gigs of my uh, of my RAM. I have about double that available to me. It makes sense, of course. Uh, you know, I'm only using 38 percent of my CPU, though. In fact, these two went to sleep on me now. They're not being utilized, and that's just how it's being parsed out, I suppose, out to the processor. Let's check back in over here on results. Uh, still reading features. Now, this is probably going to take a while, uh, so I'm not going to have you endure all this watching and waiting for it to, uh, to complete. Um, but yeah, it looks like it's doing some stuff. I wish it would be closer to maxed out here. I wish we'd be running about 80% or so, but Hey, that's all right. I guess I could probably go to my processes and uh, force it to use more. Whoops. Yeah, it's doing quite a bit of stuff for me here. Getting a little bit of lag because I'm, I'm putting her to work. I wonder if I set the priority to high on this for this job. It says changing the priority of certain processes could cause instability. Well, let's just give it a try anyway. Doesn't seem like it made much difference. Well, We'll, uh, we'll check in again next week. I can give you an update on what this thing did and how long it took it to process. It does look, like I said, that it is uh, utilizing these resources pretty darn well. Um, and uh, hey, next time I do this, we're going to go back to our catalog and look at some new capabilities of the geo database to edit existing um, fields or attributes. Uh, the names we could edit in 10.1 and it looks like we're also able to edit and change the data type. We'll do some comparisons between uh, the geo databases, uh, do some testing with geo databases and shape files uh, next time. So hey, catch you then. Goodbye.